Hey guys, this is Doug, Fellowship of the Martyrs dot com. I don't even know if I can do this video. So it's about eleven o'clock on the fourth of July, two thousand eleven. I just got back from watching the fireworks here. In Liberty, the city was doing a thing, kids, brass band, patriotic, flag waving up at the college where I went to college. We took a couple van loads of folks from the houses that wanted to go see the fireworks. I felt like I was supposed to go. They wanted me to go. I have a hard time with group public things because I mostly just cry a lot and want to throw up and this one was worse than normal. Sitting on the bleachers at the football stadium, <sighs> band playing and I'm playing solitaire on my phone or anything to distract myself try not to focus on the demons on the guy next to me and the blindness of all the people sitting in the bleachers and how there's I don't know three four more times more people that came to watch fireworks than came to the Christian concert we had two weekends ago in the middle of the downtown square the blindness of the nation after the second God bless America whatever and playing all the tunes of all the different armed services branches and all the guys that served in the Marines stand up and all the guys in the Navy stand up and Everybody claps, and I can't clap. I mean, even some of the guys in our group that were there served, and I got nothing against folks that went and felt it was their duty, and whatever. I'm just not political anymore. I'm just not a part of this anymore. And the fireworks start, and I don't care. And it, I'm just getting more and more frustrated. And they're playing some country ish, witchcrafty, manipulative, feely song about, you know, I've counted the cost, I'm going to carry my cross, and be in the armed services and die for my country uh, and I everything in me is like why are you putting scripture in that song why don't you why don't you why don't you sing the count the cost carry my cross gonna die gonna be persecuted thing in Sunday school Okay, it's not that I'm a pacifist. It's not that... I don't know what I am anymore. I just know I'm not political. I don't believe I'm American. He won't let me say the Pledge of Allegiance. He won't let me put my hand over my heart. He won't let me salute a flag. I'm just not of that anymore. And I was Rush Limbaugh 24-7, Sean Hannity, Republican, NRA. I mean, I was you know and he scrubbed it all out of me in an instant when he showed me how bad things are and how much we have to hurry and how desperate the situation is 
and a couple thousand people in this one little stadium and, and sitting on the grass and whatever. And, and, and I don't know how many people all over the country and how many things on TV watching and millions of dollars, millions of dollars spent on flashing lights, on, on nothing, on smoke. So they could go, ooh, ah. And I was one of them. I was. Five years ago, seven years ago, whatever, it was different. But now, they watch fireworks and feel patriotic. And I watch fireworks and see babies melting. See asteroids and fire from the sky blasting whole cities. I see dirty bombs and nukes and missiles and flags of other countries flying over parts of America. I see hunger and starvation. I, I, people are stealing fire hydrants for the copper. Were they doing that when they had jobs? Were they doing that? Okay, maybe occasionally some crackhead or whatever. But that's nothing. Nothing compared to what's coming. How many more? How many more 4th of July fireworks displays, God bless America's, are we going to have? One, maybe one, maybe two. How, how many? Oh. Uh. So I got up and left and walked out, uh, trying to catch my breath and not throw up. The blindness, the deadness of their hearts, self, the flesh, the, 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 the ugliness of humanity that still just can be oblivious to everything as long as there's sparkly stuff. The Romans understood bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. Keep them fed, keep the entertainment rolling, and you can get anything done. You can pass any law. You can do anything. You can take away all their rights. Just keep them entertained. And we got five, six, seven, eight hundred cable channels. Sports and NASCAR and fireworks displays and concerts and 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 this thing we call church is no different. It's all bread and circuses. Fellowship suppers, committee meetings, keep them busy, give them something to do. Oh, you want to start a new group? We'll start an autism support group for, you know, whatever, uh, something. Just keep them entertained and don't give them time to really pray or really think hard or really cry about anything because we don't want them dissatisfied. We want them nice and sleepy and calm and to think everything's okay. We killed Osama bin Laden. Everything's great. Everything's great. The dollar's not melting down. The bankers aren't in charge of everything. We don't have leaders that are deliberately trying to destroy the country and Satan's hands not controlling the whole thing. No! Wings at Hooters are on sale. Woo! Oh, God, help us. God, help us. I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know what it's going to take. This has got to be the stupidest generation the world has ever seen. And I don't say that in some sense that I'm excluded from it either. 
but for the hand of God, but for me praying to see through the eyes of Jesus, he showed me something that hurt so bad, so bad, it instantly and totally wrecked my life. But for him opening my eyes, the tiniest little crack, and putting the, the littlest little spark of his heart in me, so that I could feel his pain, so that I could see the urgency of the hour, so that I could know that something has to be different, I was right there. Uh. Uh. So I walk back to the van and uh, groan and cry and snot and beg him for mercy. And they see God bless America. And I just hear God's forsaken America. God is turning his back on America. God is walking away from America. God is punishing, cursing, spitting on Babylon. The place where Christ was crucified more than any other nation in the history of the world. For the potential that we had for the kingdom of God. For the difference we could have made. For the gospel we could have spread. There is no place in the world ever in history that has dishonored, spit on, done more harm to, the, to, to Christ than this Babylon right here. I don't believe the two witnesses are going to prophesy in Jerusalem. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says they will prophesy in Babylon where Christ was crucified. It never refers to Jerusalem as Babylon. In Revelation 18, when it talks about the destruction of Babylon, that's clearly not Jerusalem. Contextually, they're not going to stand in front of the Wailing Wall. This is Babylon. And you can say, oh yeah, other things are Babylon. The, 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 the Catholic Church is Babylon. Okay, that's a different spiral. Ugh. But I think Ro Revelation 18 is talking about this country. Or North America. You can throw in Canada. Because they're just as apostate and lost and liberal and whatever. And, and, and the, the two nations founded under God with religious freedom. The... the the promised land for the true church that was being persecuted by the Catholics and then and then by the reformers, the Protestants. The true church that was out in the woods being persecuted by everybody didn't find freedom till it came to the United States and Canada. The two democracies founded under God with religious freedom, with no state sponsored religion. And the manifest destiny, just like Israel had, to take over the land, to drive your enemies out in front of you. Oy. And every 50 years, he's had a revival in this country. Every 50 years, he's honored the year of Jubilee. And we're due right now. We're overdue. And I believe it's coming, and I believe we'll see it. And I don't know if it will be a few hundred people or millions of people. I don't know if it'll be one tiny little pocket where a spark lights, or it'll spread all over. I want it to be giant. I want it to be huge. I want it to... But then I look at how cold and dark and stupid and blind and selfish people are. How enamored with sparkly little smoke. And I want to throw up.
I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know who's going to hear. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the tribulation is required to put us on our knees, broken, begging for God's mercy, just to get us to be one. In New Orleans, the pastors started feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and taking in the poor wanderer. They stopped arguing about when the rapture was and whether to have communion with grape juice or wine. They started really doing the right stuff. And all it took was a hurricane! And as soon as it was over, they're right back at it. Worse than ever. I think the tribulation is required. We're going to need seven years of sustained pounding on us into the ground before we will hit our knees and love one another. Before we will lay down our differences. Before we'll stop fighting about stupid stuff and just say, here, brother, here's the last little bit of can of corn that I got. I don't know where I'm going to find another one, but we're going to trust God from now on. Let's go hide in the woods because they're coming around us up and I don't want to fight with you anymore. I just love you and I don't want to be alone anymore. It's coming. It's coming. I bet everything on it. I believe with all my heart. And I've seen visions. Here in Kansas City, buildings blown in half. Suffering like you never could even imagine. Whatever Ethiopian adopt a kid, flies on their face, hungry, starving, see every bone pictures, nothing. That's nothing like what's coming. Nothing like what's coming to your neighborhood. Enjoy the fireworks. Christmas tree, shiny lights, Easter eggs. I don't know. Have a big cake. Spend all your money on your wedding. Blow the doors off. Enjoy it while you can. Or wake up and cry like a baby. Read Ezekiel 9. That's the only safe place. That's the only safe place. Only those with the mark of repentance on their forehead. Only ones that see the, sta the sad state of Jerusalem. That see the abominations that done in her. They're the only ones that escape the death angel that's coming to slaughter them all mercilessly, man, woman, and child, and pile their dead bodies in the temple. I'm reading Ezekiel 9 a couple years ago for the upteenth time, and the Lord whispers real quiet to me. He says, you know, I already did that. Your temples are all full of dead bodies. And they are. All these buildings are full of dead bodies. There might be somebody under there that's still breathing. There might be somebody in there that gets it. But the vast majority of everybody out there has no clue whatsoever what's really going on and how bad things really are. And how much we did this by our fascination for shiny sparkles of smoke, which is all that your life really is. A blade of grass that withers, a flower that fades, that we're enamored with and think is everything that there is. Well, if that ain't enough, I don't know what else to say. So, <sighs> may the Lord have mercy on whoever, whoever he'll have mercy. 
I don't know. I don't know if God wants to bless America. I don't know if I'm, any amount of praying will get him to turn. I don't, I don't think so. I think we're out of time. I think this thing is on the rails, and I think we're in big trouble. Not we, the remnant. We're going to go through it, and we're going to be persecuted, and it's going to require patient endurance on the part of the saints. If you're not right with the Lord, you better get right, because it's coming. And it's going to be the worst that you could imagine. People will go mad for the sights their eyes see. They will beg for the mountains to fall on them, and they won't. I'm going to go cry some more. You do whatever.